In today's video, we'll be taking a look at a crater that might explode, and the possible origins of life on Earth. Underwater forest. A forest of cypress trees sprouted on the banks of a river near the Gulf of Mexico around 60,000 years ago, when prehistoric humans were first leaving Africa. As the trees aged, they collapsed and were buried beneath the mud. When the sea level rose, the forest was once again submerged. Scientists have now discovered the same woodland and believed it holds the key to developing breakthrough medications and saving lives. According to the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration, which published an article about the ancient forest, the old forest remained undisturbed for millennia. However, Hurricane Ivan slammed the Gulf Coast in 2004, scooping away the seafloor and sediment that had trapped the forest. Since then, a few scientists and filmmakers have visited the site, which currently lay 60 feet beneath off of Alabama shore in Mobile Bay. However, it wasn't until a team of scientists from Northeastern University and the University of Utah embarked on an NOAA-funded excursion to dive into the seas. This was to bring back bits of wood for analysis as well as other parts. Despite being 60,000 years old, the wood was extraordinarily well-preserved due to being buried beneath layers of sediment that prevented the oxygen from destroying it. Irosomes. Videographer Steve Hathaway was shooting a tourism promo on an island off the coast of New Zealand when his friend Andrew Buttle beckoned him to check out a strange scene. It was a translucent, worm-like creature, 26 feet long, that resembled a big windsock. It was a pyrosome, large enough for him to swim through, and he'd been hoping to see one for years. Swimming around it was quite fantastic, adds Buttle. He said that they could get up close and personal with the hundreds of thousands of small critters. That's because a pyrosome is a free-flowing colony of hundreds or thousands of individual organisms known as zoids. Zoids are small, multicellular creatures that filter their food by pumping water through their bodies and capturing phytoplankton, bacteria, animal excrement particles, and whatever else they can clean up. They're classified as tunicates, or sea squirts, due to their ability to pump water into one siphon and not another. They're also known as the cockroaches of the sea for their capacity to extract food from even the most hostile surroundings. These gelatinous tubular bodies glow due to natural bioluminescence, which is how they receive the term pyrosome, which is derived from the Greek words for fire and body. They can be as small as a centimeter or as large or as larger than the one seen in the clip. City of Heraklion Divers uncovered a rare military vessel among the buried ruins of Thonos Heraklion, an ancient Egyptian metropolis. The flat-bottomed ship was about 80 feet long and featured both oars and a huge sail. It was constructed in the classical Greek style, but it also incorporates certain Egyptian shipbuilding traditions. When the neighboring temple of Amun fell, the vessel's remains were discovered beneath 15 feet of clay and rubble from the edifice. A 4th century Greek funerary area was also discovered during excavations by a joint French and Egyptian expedition directed by the European Institute for Underwater Archaeology. Underwater archaeologist Frank Gadillo said on the Antiquities Ministry's Facebook page that the Greek ship is just one of two known surviving vessels of its kind. Archaeologists discovered a comparable vessel design from 235 BC in 1971. The Masala ship was launched in Sicily. Prior to Alexander the Great's establishment of Alexandria in 331, Athanas Heraklion was Egypt's main port city, commanding the country's entrance at the mouth of a western branch of the Nile River. Doggerland Things aren't always what they appear to be. Looking at the area between continental Europe and the eastern coast of Great Britain, you'd never believe it was anything other than a vast body of water. However, around 12,000 years ago, as the last big ice age was coming to an end, the environment was drastically different. Doggerland had a succession of gently sloping hills, marshland, heavily wooded valleys, and swampy lagoons instead of the North Sea. Doggerland was populated by Mesolithic humans. Doggerlanders were hunter-gatherers who traveled with the seasons, fishing, hunting, and gathering food such as hazelnuts and berries, at least according to archaeologists and anthropologists. The Doggerlanders were gradually pushed out of their seasonal hunting areas over time. Water trapped in glaciers and ice sheets began to thaw, drowning Doggerland. The Mesolithic inhabitants were moved onto higher ground in what is now England and the Netherlands around 6,000 years ago. Doggerlander nomadic presence can be found entrenched in the bottom, where modern fishermen frequently unearth old bones and artifacts dating back roughly 9,000 years ago. These items drew the attention of British and Dutch archaeologists and paleontologists to Doggerland's submerged history. Hydrothermal Vents The water on our planet's surface allows life to exist. 
Organisms can thrive even in the near-freezing deep water. But are hydrothermal vents the origin of life? Hydrothermal vents on the seafloor emit a superheated fluid from the Earth's crust. Despite the heat, the surrounding environment is ideal for a variety of creatures. Hydrothermal vents are structures that emerge naturally in the ocean. They're most commonly seen at divergent plate borders where tectonic plates are moving apart. The vents release a fluid heated to extraordinary temperatures as it seeps through the Earth's crust from the ocean. The history of life on Earth is extensive. Multicellular animal fossils have been discovered dating back more than 500 million years, with the oldest animal fossils from hydrothermal vents reaching back around 440 million years. Some of the earliest evidence of microbial life on Earth comes from rocks generated in hydrothermal vent conditions around 4 billion years ago in Canada. Because the planet's surface was hostile at the time, life is more likely to have originated beneath the Earth's crust or in the deep sea. According to research, early life relied on chemosynthetic processes similar to those present in the ocean today. As a result, hydrothermal vents are a strong contender for the origin of life on Earth. Zombie Starfish Sounds like a scene from Night of the Living Dead. The animals get lesions, their arms twist and curl, finally falling off, and they die as a white blob. These creatures are also known to cannibalize one another. Is this a harbinger of the end times? No, it's just a starfish wasting disease. Scientists refer to outbreaks of the disease, known as the sea star associated densivirus, as plagues because they cause massive die offs of the critters. The most recent outbreak was in 2013, when millions of sea stars died and formed sticky white clots off the coast of Alaska, Canada, and Mexico. Previous outbreaks were documented in 1972 and 1978. In 2014, scientists found the Densivirus infection, which infects 19 different species of sea stars and is linked to rising water temperatures. The number of sea stars is significant because they prey on sea urchins. An unrestrained urchin population would consume many species of underwater plant life if sea stars were not there. As a result, diminished plant life causes famine and other marine life species, upsetting the global ecosystem's equilibrium. Exploding Crater a recent scientific research may have shed new light on enigmatic events on Siberia's Yamal Peninsula, where the formation of multiple enormous craters in the permafrost has been attributed, at least by some, to the venting of massive pockets of methane gas, maybe in a dramatic or unexpected manner. According to Pavel Sarov and colleagues at the Arctic University and Norway Center for Arctic Gas, Hydrate, Environment, and Climate, perhaps related structures appear to exist offshore as well, entrenched within the South Kara Sea's shallow continental shelf. The researchers published their findings in the Journal of Geophysical Research, Earth Surface, in August, but they just recently received traction due to part in the Siberian Times report. The researchers claim to have discovered and assessed seven offshore pingo-like phenomena, or enormous mounds emerging from the seafloor. Pingos are massive icy mounds that grow in some Arctic places, with a giant wedge of ice sticking out of the ground and being covered up by Earth to resemble a hill. Giant Isopods Despite their interesting appearance and huge size, giant isopods are not that well known. We know where they dwell and how they fit within the taxonomic scheme sitting together in the genus Bathinimus. Despite being found in 1879, these unique animals have yet to be the subject of substantial research and remain a mystery to science. There are many species that live on the seafloor that appear alien to us on land. Giant isopods can survive up to 500 meters beneath the ocean surface. However, these 14-legged goliaths are distant cousins of the small wood lice you can find scuttling around in your garden. The species Bathonomus giganteus is the largest isopod. These arthropods are significantly larger than your typical pill bug. They can grow to be more than 30 centimeters long from head to tail. Deep Sea Lake OceanX, a deep sea exploration organization, has a new high-tech vessel called the Ocean Explorer. It transports four deep-water vehicles, two of which are submersibles carrying scientists as well as a helicopter and has four research labs. Ocean Explorer made an unexpected discovery on its first mission to the Red Sea, a brine pool over 1,700 meters below the surface teeming with otherworldly life, extremophiles to be precise. These are life forms that survive in conditions we couldn't believe possible on our planet and provides clues to how life on Earth began. This is the first brine pool to be discovered in the northern Red Sea's Gulf of Ajaba. Brine pools are one of the most severe habitats on the planet, but despite their high salinity, strange chemistry, and absence of oxygen, these pools are teeming with life. Prior research has identified the Red Sea brine pool microorganisms as a source of bioactive compounds with potential anti-cancer effects. See you all next time!